Hey everyone, Shane here with HR.com. Today I have a 2012 Ford Taurus. And I want to walk through how to install the Kirk Class 3 trailer hitch receiver. When we're looking for a hitch for our vehicle, we need to determine what we're going to be using it for. If we are wanting to just put on a bike rack or maybe a cargo carrier, then the Class 2 hitch is going to work great. Keep in mind with the Class 2 hitch, it is an inch quarter by inch and a quarter receiver through opening. You could be limited on what accessories will fit in there and limit it to weight capacity. What I mean by that is if you have more than two or three bikes, uh, you're not going to be able to use the Class 2 hitch. You're going to want to go up to the Class 3, which is what we have on here today. With the Class 3 hitch, we have a very wide variety of different hitch mount accessories. It's going to be a steel construction, black powder coat finish. It's going to stay looking nice for a really long time. It's going to hold up in all weather conditions. When we're talking about accessories, we're talking about bike cracks, cargo carriers, and with the Class 3, even pulling a trailer, maybe a pop-up trailer or something like that. Cargo carrier, we can get stuff from inside, put it outside, make more room for our passengers. Bike racks, we're not going to try to load the bikes inside the car. We can put them on the bike rack. Now, with a Class 3 hitch, we can hold up to four bikes. As I mentioned, this is a Class 3 hitch, 2 inch by 2 inch retiever tube opening, which is going to accommodate a lot of different hitch mount accessories. We're going to have a reinforced collar to give us a little extra stability there. Hitch pin hole is going to be 5 8 inch in diameter. It's going to take a standard 5 8 hitch pin. The hitch pin and clip does not come with this hitch, however, it can be found here at HR.com. This is what is going to hold your accessories in place. We're going to have rolled steel, safety chain loops, see very large openings. So if we are pulling a trailer that may have a larger size hook, you know that hook's going to fit on there. Now I'm going to give you a few measurements and weight capacities to help you when you're deciding on any of those hitch mount accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost part of our bumper fascia, it's going to be about 7 inches. That number is important for any of your hitch mount accessories like your bike racks and cargo carriers that may fold up against the vehicle. We're going to, we want to make sure they're not going to make contact. From the ground to the top innermost part of the receiver tube, it's going to be about 11 and a half inches. Keep that number in mind for any of your hitch mount accessories. It may require a little bit more ground clearance. As far as our weight capacities go, we're going to have a 400 pound max ton weight, which is a downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube. So when we're putting our cargo carrier on our bike racks or even that smaller trailer that may have a heavier tongue, we want to make sure we're not exceeding that downward pressure. We're going to have a 4,000 pound gross trailer weight, which is a trailer plus the load included. I always recommend checking the owner's manual of the vehicle. Make sure the vehicle can withstand that amount of weight. You want to go with the lowest number between the vehicle and the hitch. The curve recommends that any item that is a non wheeled load is supported by straps. You can find those straps here at eTrailer.com. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's walk through how to get it installed. Start our installation. We're going to take a strap. We're going to hang it from somewhere on a rear axle. We're going to go underneath our exhaust. I like to hang it from the springs. They're easily accessible. And we'll pull it up tight. Next thing we need to do is we need to remove our rubber isolators that are holding our exhaust in place. We'll have one here and one right here. To remove those, you can use soapy water or a silicone spray if you have some. We're going to spray down the hangers, let them soak for just a second. Then we'll take a pry bar. We're going to pry the hanger off of the exhaust hanger itself, or pry the isolator off the exhaust hanger. And we'll use the strap to slowly lower our exhaust to give us access to our exhaust hanger on this side. If you have dual exhaust, from here on out, everything is going to be the same. We need to remove our exhaust hanger bracket from the frame rail. We'll use a 10 millimeter socket. This hanger will not be reinstalled. We're going to take a pull wire, spring side, we're going to go to this most forward hole, and we're going to come out this back hole. We're going to take a spacer block, slide up into the hole first, take a carriage bolt, thread it onto the spring end of the wire. Feed it up into the hole. 
pull it out here. We're gonna unwind or unscrew the wire off of the bolt. For this one, we're gonna do a reverse feed. We're gonna put our spacer block on first. We're gonna thread our bolt on to the spring or the feeder. Feed the bolt up into the, the hole first and the spacer block and bring it back down. We're gonna repeat that same thing on the other side. The only thing different here is we're gonna be using this existing weld nut. You notice there's quite a bit of rust and debris in there. We're gonna to have to clean that out. We're gonna take some silicone spray, we're gonna spray it in there and we'll take a nylon brush and we'll brush it out and see what we can get. It seems like our bolt is still getting hung up. What we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to tap the hole. A couple ways we can do it. We can use an actual tap or if we have a bolt the same size with the same size threads, we can make our own tap. So what I've done is I've actually made my own tap. Threads are gonna be the same. Bolt is gonna be the same size. Take your rotary tool. We're gonna to cut grooves in the sides of the bolt. And we can take the bolt and we'll start to thread it in and then we're gonna hand crank that into that hole and it will clean out the threads. Now if you're doing this and you start to feel a lot of pressure, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it, we're gonna back it out. We're gonna clean off our bolt. You can see all the stuff that's getting caught inside of there. We're gonna clean it out, spray out the hole again and then reinsert the bolt. Repeat the process until you get the hole cleaned out. Once you get it cleaned out, you should be able to hand thread the bolt into place. One thing I will say, if you're using the bolt as a tap or a separate bolt as a tap, make sure that the bolt is a high enough grade that when it heats up, it's not going to break off. So again, take your time with it. Don't force it. Keep spraying uh, some spray on it to cool it down. And once you get it cleaned out, you should be able to hand thread your other bolt in and we can install our hitch. Next thing we need to do, where our bumper fascia attaches to our frame rail, we need to pop these off. Trim panel tool, uh, you can use a screwdriver. Pop those off like that. To get access to these holes. And what we need to do is we need to open up the inside hole here and the inside hole on this bracket to a half inch. You can use a half inch drill bit, uh, what I'm going to use, and I, I'm going to use a step bit so I can take it one little step at a time to uh, get my hardware where it'll fit. Once we get it open enough to where our hardware will fit, we're going to take some Rust-Oleum paint and we're going to spray the bare metal to prevent any rusting later on. We'll let that dry for a few minutes before we install our hitch. I'm gonna take my hitch, I'm gonna slide it up over my exhaust on my driver's side, allow my strap and my exhaust to hold it up. On my passenger side, I'm gonna take the hex bolt, conical dew course, you're gonna make sure the teeth are facing up towards the hitch. We're gonna feed our pull wire through the corresponding hole in the hitch. We'll raise it up. And I'm gonna install this bolt into the factory weld nut. We'll come over to our driver's side. We'll do the same thing, put the pull wire through the corresponding hole in the hitch. We're gonna come to the center. These two tabs, we're gonna have to pull out our bumper fascia just a little to get the, those tabs to pass behind it. And then we'll come back over here. What we don't wanna do is we don't want to push our hitch up into place so hard that we push the bolt back up into the frame rail. Now we're gonna take our flange bolt, or flange nut, and we're gonna thread it onto the bolt. Then we'll come back, remove our pull wire, and install our flange nut 
on the remaining two bolts. Next we'll come here to the center. We're gonna have a nut on a bracket like that. We're gonna go up and through. We're gonna take the smaller hex bolt, kind of tooth washer, teeth facing up towards the hitch. We're gonna feed it in like this and then thread the bolt into the nut plate. We're gonna do this on each one. We're gonna come back with a 5 8 socket. We're gonna tighten the two bolts going into our bumper uh, fascia brackets. Then we'll come back and we'll tighten the remaining hardware with a three quarter inch socket. We're gonna come back and we're gonna to torque our hardware to the specifications and the instructions. And we'll take our exhaust isolator, we're gonna hang it on the bracket on the hitch itself. We'll slide that on, and then we can raise our exhaust back up into position. Once you have your exhaust back up, you can go ahead and remove your strap. And as far as our tabs, our hitch is gonna have a pre-drilled hole in it. We'll just insert the plastic holders. Then we're ready to go. It's going to do it for look at and installation on the Kirk Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on the 2012 Ford Taurus.